Weird sciencey facts that boggle my mind. The pen may be mightier than the sword, but the arrow is mightier than the bullet sometimes. Now, to be fair, this isn't one that boggles my mind, uh, but it boggled Emily's, and she thought it might boggle yours, too. We were watching this show called Alice in Borderlands. It's one of these, like, Japanese murder game TV shows complete with the, like, crappy voiceovers and everything. And it's pretty decent if you can get past, like, the voice acting, bringing down the actual acting, like a good solid four or five points. Anyway, in one of the games they're playing, uh, which which wasn't really a game, they're just like trying not to get killed by this dude called the King of Spades. They gotta kill him to like clear the game, but that's not really a game. That's just trying to kill a dude who's trying to kill you. It was, it was sort of lazy writing uh, on that one. Anyway, in one of their attempts to kill this guy, they like lure him into this trap. And it's nighttime and the dude's using like night vision goggles. And they've shot him a couple times and it's clear that he's got body armor on. Chick who's up in a, in a tree with a bow and arrow uh, puts a flare on the bow and arrow and shoots it into another tree to like light it up to blind him with his night vision goggles. Then they shoot him some more but he's got body armor on and he gets away. And I was like, why, 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 why didn't she just, you know, shoot him with the arrow? Because I'm one of those super fucking annoying people to watch television shows and movies with because I like pick them apart. Emily fucking loves it. In that vein I'm like, this is stupid. Why didn't she just shoot him with the arrow when she had the chance and this whole part of the game would be over? And Emily's like, because he's got a bulletproof vest on. I was like, that's exactly why they should have shot him with an arrow. She was genuinely surprised to learn that a bulletproof vest is not arrow and knife proof. They're technically not even bulletproof, they're ballistic resistant, but but that's semantics. And you see, physics are crazy, and while it may seem like getting shot with an arrow is just a less potent version of getting shot with a bullet, the physics that act on them and allow them to cause damage are entirely different, and therefore the methods of stopping them are entirely different. Well, an arrow and a bullet both cause damage by using velocity. An arrow leverages that velocity in a similar way that a knife leverages pressure to create cutting or puncture damage. And the tip of the arrow is hard and designed to maintain its shape, so when it hits its target, it stays pointy and cuts through it. Bullets work on an entirely different principle. They do damage by using their velocity to deliver massive amounts of kinetic energy. Think of an arrow more like being stabbed with a knife and a bullet more like being hit with a bat, except on your insides. Now, obviously, bullets still puncture you like an arrow does, but if a bullet doesn't expend the majority of its kinetic energy inside its target, it'll just pass through, leaving a little hole that, unless you hit, like, a vital organ, isn't gonna do a whole lot of damage. So bullets, unlike arrows, are designed to deform when they hit a target. They mushroom. This one actually came out of one of my deer, which is impressive. I've never actually found a high-powered rifle round stay inside a deer before, but what happens is you go from having a tiny little point on a straight-flying bullet to a big, flat surface like this and a bullet that starts to tumble and when that happens it expends the majority of its energy inside the target that it hits and that is a bullet's greatest strength but also its greatest weakness when it comes to body armor because all body armor is is just layers of fabric there's also tactical body armors these days that have plates of ceramic to help stop and divert high-powered rifle rounds so that's irrelevant for the case of this video so these layers of fabric which is generally Kevlar are designed to force that bullet to deform outside of your body but once it deforms it's a lot harder for that projectile to to puncture through those layers. And then those layers work in pretty much the same way as that safety net does underneath the trapeze artist at the circus. Slows that projectile down and dissipates its energy over a larger area on the outside of your body. So you end up with a big bruise, maybe like you got hit with a baseball, maybe a cracked rib, but you'll avoid a little hole with a lot of soup inside. And while Kevlar sounds like some big fancy high-tech bullet stopping material, the first bulletproof vests were worn by the Koreans in the 1860s. And all they were was tightly woven layers of cotton. And then Dr. Goodfellow, who treated Wyatt Earp after the shootout at the OK Corral, worked on bulletproof material, which was just layers of silk, and that was effective too. And Archduke Ferdinand was even wearing a bulletproof vest when he was assassinated and kicked off the whole First World War. Uh, but don't blame the vest. He got shot in the neck. Now, none of those types of vests would be effective against ammunition today, but I tell you that because Kevlar is just fancy, high-tech plastic fabric. And it should be easy to imagine how an arrow or a knife can cut through thick fabric like Grandma at Joanne's before she goes to a quilting workshop. And that is precisely why a bulletproof vest is not knife-proof or arrow-proof. And they do make stab and slice-resistant vests, but those don't work great for stopping bullets because, once again, they're utilizing physics to stop damage in a completely different way. And the fact that Rambo and Robin Hood's favorite weapons will pass right through bullet-stopping body armor, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.